Good evening. Um, tonight I want to rehearse um, the slideshow of my Do Ask Do Tell film, the, the three act structure I've talked about previously in other blog posts and, or videos um, tonight. Um, I'm just going to rehearse the mechanics of doing it. I'll leave this one up. And when I actually start doing it, I hope to do the first one by no later than, I'd say, July the 6th. Um, I'm pretty busy the 7th. I, if I don't, it'd probably be July the 8th. But we're getting close to being able to do it. There is a possibility that when I do these that I will edit them later and then take them down and replace them with new versions. Um, I'll keep manual counts of, of how they're doing myself because that would wipe out the stats and everything. Um, but yeah, this will give you a feel for what a, mo a do as to tell movie based on my mainly my first book would really look like if it really got made. That's kind of the point. Now I also want to talk, before I start running, I'm going to rehearse this by going through some of the images and just, just practicing the mechanics of doing the film making sure I don't run into any problems with the upload with, with YouTube and so forth. Um, let me just start by mentioning um, the, the um, well, I brought up the wrong part of Microsoft, Microsoft Office. I brought up Excel by mistake. They look too much alike. Here it is. Um, Want to bring up what I want to talk about is the philosophical conflicts in in a potential do as to tell Kemp film, and I'll just run through these real quickly. Um, freedom and order um, are not necessarily opposite; they may support each other. One may want to find order in himself and other people, but need freedom to do that. And so, and so order would not be consistent with the absolute authority of anyone, like a dictator. That's one idea. Another idea is that personal agency, the ability of your own autonomy as a person, could not exist without having skin in the game and having the ability to meet the real needs of other people and provide for people when it's necessary. That's even if you didn't have your own kids. Um, and... Finally, um, essentialism in the essentialism of citizenship in a democracy. You sometimes have to share existential risks and sacrifices with others. Um, public health recently with COVID, that was an example, but a lot of other examples, war, conscription, stuff like that. And you can't change the circumstances you're born with. Just, that's just a fact of physics. So um, that was something I wanted to go through. And now I'll um, start going through the screen, the um, slideshow itself, and um, and I'll run through these quickly, and then I'll play a little bit of background music that I composed. It's not. Um, toward the end and practice putting background music in. I may do this later differently with, with the Mac and with iTunes and everything um, with import MP4 files or something, but this is how I'm trying it tonight. So I'm just running through the idea that the story is geographical and I'll be pointing, moving around on a map a lot. That's a globe in my apartment. That's my house, a train set. There's me at the piano some drawings, some field trips, some went in junior high school, essentially, another um, a stadium that we made, some trips to Ohio in the summer, there's your grandmother, report cards, another stadium, oh, my music, that, let me bring up, let me bring up my music um, right now, and then I'll come back to this, I'll play one thing in the background, um, See, it doesn't, I'll just, I, I can't save this a URL because it will just start playing it immediately. So I have to actually take a little bit of time and bring it up.
Texas. Um, in 1979, that's the condo, the last con place I lived. I bought that condo in early '85 on Lake June Road. There's the back of it. The um, when I came back before that, with the image before, I think was the, the Cathedral of Hope in Dallas, and. The building I worked in, the Juice Lyco Corporation I'm in Boston, it was the building was torn down around 2007. But I worked there until 1997 till I moved to Minneapolis. The First Baptist Church, my submarine visit um, when I was working on gays in the military in 1993. That's a souvenir from a, a sunfish cap. Some course points, a scene from a museum close quarters, Fort McNair where President Clinton announced his don't ask, don't tell, don't pursue policy in 1993. Some more stuff for, with gays in the military. And this is the place where m my books were printed near near there, near in the case of the airport. And then living in Minneapolis in the 1997 to 2003, that was my lecture at Hamlin University. Was in crutches because I had had an accident and fallen and broken my hip. And another lecture at the Dakota Unitarian Fellowship in Rosemont in 2002 after 9/11. The building where Cope with the Child Online Protection Act was was um, finally the trial was held in 2006 and it was struck down. That's come back with some state laws now. With Virginia recently, I had a had a. Um, Video about that. Um, more about the the, the 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 2007 exhibit regarding "Don't Ask, Don't Tell," um, the, and that's the hospice where my mother died. That was also the elementary school Woodlawn that I went to first, and the, then the gathering when "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" was repealed. So I th and that's my middle school. I think that'll do it for for the. Um, for the this particular trial run, it went fairly well, and I'll put this up. Make sure we don't have any problems putting it up, and then later on this week I'll get to making the real ones. And thank you for listening. <laughs>